Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we got a brand new team of the week that we're going to break down. I need to mention guys as well, tonight on my channel on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, it's Team Build Tuesday happening on a Wednesday. So if you're a subscriber of mine on Twitch, uh, we basically just start pulling all the subs and go over your teams live on Twitch. And again, that happens at 9 p.m. down in the link down below. And again, if you want to ever check out Talk Talk Hut or NHL all day long, join our Discord. Again, link is down below. All right, guys, let's get into today's team of the week. We got a bunch of good players, so let's see what we got. All righty, so we'll kick things off with the 90 93 Artemi Panarin. Honestly, Panarin cards are fantastic for anyone that scores off the rush. If you like Jack Hughes, you're going to like Artemi Panarin. I personally didn't like his Team of the Year card. It's just, again, the way that I play NHL. I need someone a little bit bigger that can hold on to the puck down low when you're on the forecheck and on the cycle. Uh, but nonetheless, his shot is an absolute dot. 99 accuracy, 95 power. Not much else you can say here. I mean, Magician on this card is literally pointless, however, though, uh, which kind of sucks, uh, as is, you know, basically passing playmaker both of these synergies don't really improve the card at all um so that's kind of tough but other than that uh you know a phenomenal card and you know definitely one if you packed i'd probably sell but you know he could be a good value because people might not like the fact of his synergies and whatnot but still regardless a very very good card the right-handed version of jack Hughes. then we got the 88 alexander barkov the thing that's tough about Barkov is his face-offs are so low. Um, at 86, like, that's tough for an 88 overall card. Like, I would much rather have the 88 Team of the Week Gonze Kopitar. This card is just slow. It doesn't have a synergy to help out the speed. His shot is under 90. Like, there's no reason. Other than his size, you, you, you want to go the 88 Onze Kopitar. Next, we got another biggie in the 93 Pasternak. Pasternak cards are basically just a bigger version of Artemi Panarin in NHL 2021. This is a phenomenal one, too, with the synergy combo. Again, light the lamp, nothing crazy, but Workhorse makes this card gross because you add in Spark, and he's basically got max acceleration. His distributor will get it up to 94 speed. His shot is almost maxed out uh, with light the lamp on, and uh, defensively with 95 stick checking and 93 awareness, he's in great shape. This is a phenomenal card, and... Uh, you know, for the rest of the year, Pastor Night cards are going to be gross, especially if you have the uh, Team of the Year edition like I do. Um, I really, really like his card. Then we've got the 89 Johnny Goudreau. Um, not bad this year, obviously, with the speed meta for wingers. Uh, obviously, in his own zone, he's basically a liability with 76 body checking and 5'9", but that's not what he's used for, so he's able to burn down the wing. Again, passing Playmaker and Magician, just kind of pointless on this card. It does max out deking, puck control, and agility, which is nice. But he's already he's already got that in spades, so uh, I would like to see maybe another shooting synergy. But uh, nonetheless, it's very, very it's a very good card, very fast, and again, won't cost you an awful lot considering you know uh, he he's not very big. It's not a fan favor among the the community, so uh, good card regardless. Then we've got the ninety Alexander Radulov with Gladiator and Wingman. Uh, you know, again with these two synergies, they're they're not. I mean, Wingman is a very, very good synergy. Gladiator one, not so much. Uh, 87 speed gets it up to 90 with Distributor. Spark will get this card into the 90s with Acceleration. His shot is in the 90s with Gladiator and Wing... Well, regardless, uh, with either of these, his hand stats are all 93 and above. Really good card. Not much else you can say. Kind of that middle ground tier now from, like, the high-end master items and, you know, the, the high 80 base cards uh, and, and whatnot for the left-handed wingers. But a really good card and, you know, uh, the Gladiator Synergy, I'm not a huge fan of, but Wingman, obviously, that's very usable. Then we got the 86 Jordan Everly. This is, yeah, again, this needs a speed synergy. 86 overall, 5'11", no body checking, Thief on a winger with Magician, who's, I mean, Magician on this card isn't terrible. Uh, but yeah, this is a hard pass for me. There's a lot better right-handed winger cards. Then we got the 84 Christian Dvorak. With Wingman and Thief. Thief makes this card actually usable on the draws, which is good considering he's one of the best faceoff men in the league. Super underrated. Uh, but without Thief, he's a winger, and if he's a winger, his speed is, yeah, not enough here. There's a lot better base cards and other ones that I would much rather have than this Christian Dvorak. 84, Nick Suzuki's next up on the docket with Workhorse and Light the Lamp. A sneaky, decent card with Workhorse because, again, with Distributor, gets 90 speed, mid-90s mid, mid 90s acceleration. Shot, though, is kind of tough, but, you know, you could he is usable on the wing uh, for anyone that's just starting out in the game. It's not like he's going to hurt you all that much compared to your other options, so not a bad card. 
Then we got the 86 Jesse Poyarvi, Gladiator and Speedster. Uh, now Speedster getting up to 90 speed before Distributor. He's six foot four. This is a very nice card for anyone that's looking for. This is basically guys the cheap version of Patrick Line. And the fact that he's only an 86 overall, like phenomenal. If you can't afford the Jet, uh, the uh, Patrick Line and you're just starting the game, you have a base team. This is a card I would definitely go after for anyone that had you know Eric Daze for example. Actually, I think he's left-handed. Um, yeah, if you can't afford line eight, this is the card. Six foot four with 93 speed with distributor. That's gross. 100% to buy. And then on the final one, we got Joshua Waugh, uh, Olivier Nato, and Marcus Nenin. You can avoid those. On to defense, though, we got the 89 Jeff Petrie, and Jeff Petrie cards have been real good this year. With Wingman and Moore, of course, that's a great synergy combo because he can jump up to basically 96 acceleration, 89 speed. This is basically a wor a player based synergy version of the um John Carlson. Uh he's 6 foot 3, 90 body checking, over 90 defensive where does the stick checking and the slap shot power of 90. Great card um and again has helped for synergies for sure. So uh, a really 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 good defenseman card. Then we got the 89 Tory Krug with Gladiator and Howitzer. Gladiator actually helps him out in my opinion just because uh you know he's a little bit smaller. I'm not a huge fan of small defensemen at all in no way shape or form, but 91 speed before distributor, 98 shot power. Again, if he's paired with someone a lot bigger like Ekblad or you know someone of that of that set, Philip Myers, this is a very nice compliment and if you use if you use point shots, this could be a gross card, but in his own zone it's going to be awfully tough, especially without Gladiator because his body checking is so low. Then we got the 87 Ryan McDonough, speedster and shutdown. Nice combo for him. Gets into 90 speed, then acceleration almost touches 90. Uh, his shot is okay. This is like an upgrade over the base Ryan O'Reilly when you first start your team for sure. Like this is a this is a decent card for sure in that middle range. Then we got the 83 Colton Pareko. In my opinion, just a little too slow. Like 6'6 is unbelievable, but 81 acceleration, even if you have Spark and Distributor, it's just going to be awfully tough. You might as well save your coins and try and get the Master Set Pareko if you're going to get him. 78 Moro Duffner and Moritz Sider, the 90 overall with Shutdown and Gladiator. He's six foot four, which is incredible. If you activate both of these synergies, he does get 99 slap shot power, 86 accuracy, and defensively he's almost perfect. There is a usefulness to this card. Like if you were looking at Rob Blake, you could get this card probably for cheaper. And with 88 speed with distributor, 89 acceleration, and a great shot here. Defensively, his stats are perfect as well. There is definitely a place for Moritz Sider. Again, if he's paired with someone smaller, like, I mean, Tori Krug, you, that's a great D pairing. So uh, definitely a good card here. Now let's take a look at the goaltender. And we got the 95 Vasilevsky. So obviously anyone that's got the team of the year, Vazzy, he jumps up to a 95, which is phenomenal. This card specifically, Heart and Soul and Spark is tough because, again, Heart and Soul is not a synergy you're looking for. I would sell this card personally. Uh, he does, um, you know... Eh. I mean, it's it's a great card all the way around. It doesn't look like this card specifically gets hit with the um, the stat caps. So there is that. So he should be very, very good. And we'll take one quick look. Is again, we did get the upgrade of Vasilevsky. So the 95 Team of the Year Vazzy, uh is just incredible. I love this card. You know, he, he doesn't have all that great of stats, but the synergy prison thing on him that he allows is just unbelievable. So still the best goaltender, in my opinion, if you're going to drop a mill or... A, absurd amount of coins on a goalie there's no reason not to get Vasilevsky because he's the best statistical goaltender in terms of attributes and then his synergies are absolutely insane so phenomenal card all right guys so that is going to do it let me know what you think in the comment section down below of team of the week and I hope to see you tonight for team build Tuesday thank you guys for watching I'll see you next time have a good one boys